This video demonstrates the technique of laparoscopic assisted left hemicolectomy for a descending colon sigmoid junction adenocarcinoma with extracorporeal anastomosis. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rashesh Solanki and I bring greetings from Gastroplus Digestive Disease Hospital, Ahmedabad. The patient is a 40 year old female with colicky abdominal pain, constipation and anemia who on evaluation was found to have descending colon mass lesion on imaging. The colonoscopy showed descending colon structurizing mass lesion at descending colon and biopsy confirmed it to be adenocarcinoma. CECT abdomen and chest done for resectability and staging showed pericolic lymph nodes with no distant METs. The diagnosis was carcinoma descending colon CT3N plus and plan was to do a laparoscopic assisted left hemicolectomy. The operative steps are detailed here. The surgery is done in anti Trindelenburg position with left, left side up. The field is first of all exposed with exposure of DJ flexure and root of the mesentery with repositioning of omentum, transverse colon and small bowel. Medial to lateral descending colon mobilization is initially taken up beneath the IMV following which the IMV is divided and splenic flexure mobilization is done in, in the manner of uh, sub mesocolic and supracolic and lateral mobilization uh, which we shall see in detail in the movie. Following which the medial to lateral sigmoid mobilization and IMM division is done. Upper rectal mobilization also along mesorectal plane is done to avoid tension. And finally, extracorporeal specimen delivery and anastomosis is performed. The optic port is supraambilical and slightly to the left. These, uh, the surgeon stands on the right side of the patient and is working trocars in the right iliac fossa and right umbel are shown. The left uh, side trocars uh, are in mirror image and they, those are the assistant trocars uh, and epigastric trocar midway between the, um, between the xiphoid and umbilicus is optional. Uh, the representative actual operative image without optical trocar is shown over here, however this is not the same patient. Let us take a look at the video now. It is crucial to expose the operative field which includes exposure of the root of the mesentery, DJ flexure and the infemesentric vein. It is worthwhile spending a few moments here before rushing to the actual dissection. The omentum and transverse colon is rolled up and positioned beneath the liver as shown. The small bowel is arranged loop by loop in the right upper quadrant making sure to position them in a proximal to distal manner. The lesion is seen over there. Now in this case the IMV could not be identified clearly and this is a key landmark without which the medial to lateral dissection or splenic flexion mobilization is not possible. Hence we have to mobilize the mesocolon of the DJ plexure to expose it. Once it was identified we could go ahead with the medial to lateral descending colon mobilization and subsequently splenic mobilization, splenic flexure mobilization as, as well which we shall watch later. A peritoneal incision is made beneath the IMV and a plane is developed above the gyrotas fascia in the avascular plane. One must be careful to avoid injury to left ureter and gonadal vein if one goes too deep. The shiny surfaces and globular fat are two key landmarks to avoid this mistake. The edge of the gyrotas fascia is seen there which will become more prominent as we proceed further. The dissection must stay above this edge to avoid venturing into the retroperitoneal structures. The 
The movie so far has already demonstrated a part of splenic fascia mobilization, but we are breaking this movie into definite steps to facilitate understanding. A window in the transverse mesocolon is made anterior to pancreas, just above and lateral to the IMV, the so-called Melanie's, Melanie's point. The plane is developed on the surface of the pancreas up to its tail. One must avoid injury to the pancreas and stomach, which is seen through the flimsy mesocolon. A window is made uh, into the lesser sac to gain entry. The posterior wall of the stomach and the pancreas can be clearly seen in this clip. There it is, the pancreas and the stomach and the overhanging mesocolon. Once the tail of the pancreas is reached, a gauze piece is left over there as a guide to the lateral dissection. The IMV is divided and both planes above the above and below are connected now. Supracolic splenic fascia mobilization now begins by dividing the gastrocolic omentum and visualizing the posterior wall of uh, the stomach. You can see it over there. Caudal traction, caudal and uh, lateral traction by the assistant on the omentum and meso mesocolon is facilitates this dissection. We extend this dissection as far as possible to the descending colon laterally. The medially placed gauze piece can be seen there guiding that plane. This benefactor is thus completely mobilized now. Medial to lateral sigmoid colon mobilization begins by a peritoneal incision medially starting above the sacral promontory up to the root of the IMA. A layer by layer dissection is the key over here. One must avoid venturing into the retroperitoneum. The plane curves caudally towards the pararectal fold which should not be crossed. You can see it over here, the caudal plane. Now the plane is moving cranially. There it is, the caudal, caudally it curves down. The key structure guiding this plane is the IMA. The actual or the correct plane is hugging this uh, vessel. One must remain higher and avoid retroperitoneal structures like ureter and ileac vessel. Aim for shiny and yellow surfaces. The end point of the dissection is visualization of the colon. Now, the, all the fibro fatty and lymphatic tissue is cleared along the root of the IMA, which is being dissected and divided. Please notice that the IMV and left colic are held up by the assistant in a seagull or a bat wing maneuver.
following the division a correct plane must be identified which is higher up and all red tis tissues should be dissected down. The iliac and the left ureter can be seen dissected down over there. Upper rectal mobilization is done to avoid anastomotic tension especially since we, are, we were planning extracorporeal anastomosis uh, for oncological margins as well. One must stay close to the mesorectum and avoid the presacral plane. Please notice how close the left ureter is. There it is, the mesorectal plane is being dissected. The lateral colonic dissection is performed. Here we are externally checking whether for the reach of the specimen when a penastial incision is given to avoid tension during the anastomosis. The mesocolon is divided along the line of colonic division dividing the descending left colon. We like to mark out this site with suture to avoid confusion after the specimen is extraized guiding the correct point of uh, transaction without the risk of ischemia. Extracorporeal specimen Delivery and anastomosis was performed, a financial incision was given, the specimen and his descending colon were extraized, resection was done with safe oncology mar margins of 10 cm on either side and a manual descending colon to sigma anastomosis was performed in two layers. This is the uh, specimen after placing it inside, please notice how the healthy colonic uh, edges. The key point to notice here is how healthy the edges are, the post operative course was aminamel full. Rice tube was removed on post op day 1, liquid diet was added on day 2, discharge, she was discharged on post op day 6, histopathy revealed moderate difference adenocarcinoma PT3 and 1A. Thank you very much for patient listening.